And welcome to our online service today. If you are worshipping with us for the very first time, Karibu Sana, this is ICC Kitengela, where we are all about connecting people to God and to each other, challenging believers to Christ-likeness and changing the world. Do note that we have physical services that happen at 8.15, 10.15 and 12.15. To all married couples in the house, we are so pleased to invite you to an all ICC couples retreat that will happen on the 10th of December to the 13th of December. Come and join with other couples from ICC Nairobi, ICC Mara, ICC Kiserian, ICC Woodlands and other churches even as we get together to learn more about marriage and this institute. So do note that charges are 50,000 Kenya shillings per couple exclusive of transport. If you have any inquiries about this, do not hesitate to get in touch with us by the numbers on your screen. So mark the date and you cannot miss out. We are now ready to go in for worship and the service. So join with us, create some space. Let's worship the Lord, invite whoever is in the house with you. Let's join in praise and worship, even as we wait to hear what the Lord has in store for us today. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, in Jesus' name, we worship you this morning. We bless your name. We honor you, our Father. Thank you for loving us, for calling us your own, for redeeming us, O oh God, for rescuing us, my Father. We are so glad that we can come and worship you, our God, that we can lift our hands in worship and our voices, my Father. We thank you, my God, for the service ahead of us, asking that your presence will be with us, asking that your voice will be so clear to us today, my Father. May you encourage someone. May you uh, love on someone today. May you heal somebody today, my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we surrender ourselves to you praying that you'll go ahead of us and you'll be with us throughout the day. Even we commit um, every online viewer to your hands, oh God, every need represented here, my Father, that may you minister to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Do enjoy the service and God bless. Hallelujah! Hey. Oh. Father, we are grateful. We thank you for your love and your grace. We bless you. You know this song. Oh, I'm a nutty. Oh, I'm a nutty. Oh, I'm a nutty. See a bonga. City. Oh, I'm a nutty. Oh, I'm a nutty. Oh, I'm a nutty. See a bonga. Come on, help me join. Say. Oh 
the God that has been with us and Father Lord thank you that you will make a way oh God thank you for making a way for us oh Lord and we trust that indeed you will make a way oh God Thank 
And I 
Our Father and our God, how we worship you, how we honor you, Jehovah, how we bless your holy name, O oh God. Thank you for the privilege to adore you. Thank you for the privilege to worship you. Thank you for the privilege to praise you, our Father. We give you all the glory and all the honor. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, even as we hear your word, O oh God Almighty, in a few minutes, Father God, we give you praise and glory, asking that your spirit will come and minister to us, will come and encourage us, will come and enlighten us, O oh Father, will come and instruct us in the ways that you want us to go. We surrender ourselves to you, that you may reveal your will to us and your purpose to us, O oh Father, so that our families will be strong, so that our families will be, will be encouraged, so that our families will be firm, so that our families will be founded on you and on you alone, O oh God. And so, Jehovah, have your way right now. Come and minister to us, O oh Father, and come, Lord, and let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. It's such a joy and an honor and a privilege to bring the word of the Lord to us today. The past uh, few Sundays, we've been looking at the family and um, Rev. William has been taking us through the series on family. And um, last Sunday, but one, we looked at what happened to the family and just looking at how families can be founded uh, on godly principles. And last Sunday, we looked at the misunderstood man, what happened to the man. And we looked at the story where God came looking for Adam, asking, where are you? And so this morning, I'm, I'm honored to be the one to bring God's word even to us today. And um, my name is John Kimani, one of the pastors serving here at Daisiki Tengela under the leadership of Reverend Twini and William Odero. And I'm grateful for the opportunity that I have been given to share God's word today. And so today's message, I've entitled it Healthy Family 
relationships, healthy family relationships. And we are going to look at how can we make our family relationships healthy. How can we make our healthy, uh, our family relationships healthy? There is an old proverb that holds a lot of truth which says that you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. God gave you your parents. God gave you your brothers, your sisters. You know, God gave you uh, the children that you have. And when it comes to your biological family, God has no exchange policy. Your family is yours for life. God created and designed man to share intimate and loving relationships with one another. I hope you remember the events describing the creation of woman in Genesis chapter 2. This is what the Bible says, Genesis chapter 2 from verse 18. And I'm going to read verse by verse and then explain something small. Genesis 2.18 says, The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. God is, God was, and God will remain to be man's perfect helper. But humanly speaking, God and man are not suitable for each other because God and man are different, so to speak. And God knew that man would need a companion tailor-made for him. And so verse 20, uh, verse 20b of the same chapter, Genesis chapter 2, verse 20b to 22 says, But for Adam, no suitable helper was found, and that was not good. God said, it is not good for man to be alone. And so the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, the Bible says he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. Friends, the woman was made for man, and man was made for the woman. Within woman, man found a counterpart of himself bearing his resemblance. And throughout all of creation, nothing else could have taken the place of the woman for the man. She is a suitable helper made for the man. And no wonder when Adam named all the animals, at that point, there was no suitable helper for the man. I believe he had found a suitable helper for each living creature then, but for himself, there was no suitable helper. And when God brought the woman to the man, this is what the man said. Verse 23 and 24. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. Adam recognized a special place for the woman that God brought to him, that she was a special gift from God. In all of creation, no one else, none other, nothing in all of creation could have could have been found to take the place of the woman. Man, woman was made uniquely for man. And that is still true today. And no wonder we say that there is nothing else that could take the place and be called a suitable helper for man. No, not resources, not friends, nothing in all creation. Men and women try to satisfy their longing for intimate, loving relationships in many different ways today. But may I submit to us that it is only within the marriage relationship that the ultimate fulfillment, the ultimate fulfillment is found. Sexual relationships and fantasies outside of marriage will leave an individual broken and looking for more. Same-sex relationships are a perversion of God's perfect design. Talk about lesbianism, talk about homosexuality. These are a perversion of God's perfect design. They are not a disorder. They are not an alternative lifestyle. You will not say that this is the way I was born. This is against the perfect design of God. It is a sin in the eyes of God. It is only within marriage that a man and a woman can be truly satisfied. And no wonder Genesis 2.25 says, The man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Man and woman, man and woman rather were together in perfect harmony. Family relationships are at the center of all human relationships. The place where each of us begin to learn how relationships work is within the family. And Paul addresses this in his letters in the, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and chapter 6 and part of Colossians chapter number 3. And one passage in Colossians uh, chapter number 3 verse 18 to 21 says, Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. 
Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. In this passage, Paul shows us the plan that God has for family relationships. Yet we are living in a world where families today are failing. They are falling right, left, and center. They are falling apart. And many of those that are still together are less than what we can call the ideal family. What is that problem with our families which keeps us from enjoying healthy relationships as God designed? Friends, that problem is sin. God's image within us was distorted when sin entered the world. And when sin distorted God's image in us, everything we do, everything we see, we see it in a distorted way. We do it in a distorted manner. And until we deal with the sin problem, we can't expect much better than fractured, dented, and broken relationships. And that is even true for the so-called Christian families. And so the question that I want us to ask ourselves today, how can we improve our family relationships? How can we bring back God's design for healthy relationships back in our families? Today, I would like us to look at an acrostic that have acrostic family, an acrostic word family, to see how we can do this. And I do believe that if we apply this even not only in our families, but even in our home fellowships as well. They will grow and become what God intended for them. And so, as we look at the acrostic family, we are going to look at each letter, each letter of that word family, and how and what we can learn from each of them. And so, we look at F. Healthy family relationships are forgiving. Healthy family relationships are forgiving. The guidelines God gives for family relationships won't work if we are going to carry around resentment and hard feelings and bitterness towards each other as family members. It is only as our love finds expression through forgiveness do we then create an environment which is safe for each family member to respect each other and to honor one another. Nowadays, it is so hard to hear the words, I'm sorry, the words, I forgive you. They have become words that are so hard to say. Maybe it's because we don't want to humble ourselves and put others ahead of ourselves, even in our families. Listen to what the word of God says. Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 6, 14 to 15. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. How many of us want God to forgive you of your sin? How many want God to forgive us of our sin? Probably all of us. Then if you want God, if you want God's forgiveness, you must be a forgiving person. Yes, maybe you are there and you're saying, but pastor, you don't know what my husband did to me. You don't know what my wife did to me. Yes, it is true, I don't know and I may not know, but God is calling us to forgive one another. You need to forgive your husband, you need to forgive your wife. If you are going to have healthy family relationships, we need to forgive each other. Perhaps you are watching me and you are saying, Pastor, you don't know how badly I was hurt by my parents. You don't know how badly I was treated by my parents. And it was not once, it was not twice. It happened again and again and again. Yes, I may not know, and I don't have to know how your childhood was, but I'm here to tell you, God is calling us to forgive one another. If you are going to have healthy family relationships, we need to forgive one another. Perhaps you're saying, Pastor, you don't know what my child has done. They have disgraced me. They have disappointed me. They have disobeyed me. They have dishonored me. They have disrespected me. They might have done things against you as a guardian or as a parent. And probably you are saying, I never brought them up like that. You are very right. I may not know. But I'm here to tell you, you must forgive. It is not a matter of what I think. It is not a matter of what I know. It is a matter of what the Bible says. It is a matter of what God expects from each one of us. That if we want God to forgive us, then we too must forgive each other. No matter who it is, no matter what they have done, we need to forgive them. 
Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. If you are going to have healthy family relationships and by extent have healthy home fellowships, then we need to develop the attitude of forgiveness. In those home fellowships, if, if our home fellowships are to be strong, just like our families, then we need to embrace and we need to walk and we need to develop the attitude of forgiveness because the Lord forgave us and is calling you and I to forgive just as he forgave us. That you can forgive that brother in that fellowship who has hurt you, who has stumbled you, who has stepped on your toe, so to speak, you can forgive them because when we forgive, we shall have healthy, not only healthy family relationships, but also healthy home fellowships. That is forgiveness. That healthy family relationships are forgiving. We go to A. We have looked at F for forgiveness. A is for authentic and we are saying that if you are going to have healthy family relationships or even healthy home fellowships, then we need to be authentic. The cliche goes that you can fool some of the people some of the time and some other people most of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Very little can be hidden within the family for too long. Husband and wives will sooner or later discover the truth about each other. Parents will find what their children are hiding. And children are able to tell when their mom or their dad or their guardian is not their true self. When they are pretending, they are able to tell. And this is not only true for the sin that we may try to hide, but it's also true for who we are on the inside. That our hearts, our real identity will be uncovered within our family. And because this is where our true identity will be uncovered. What better place to learn how to be real? What better place to learn how to be honest? What better place to learn how to be open? What better place to learn how to be authentic than the family? We don't have to hide who we are. This is where we can learn to accept each other. This is where we can learn to respect one another. This is where we can learn to bear with one another that in spite of our differences, we can walk together. We can love each other. We can accept each other. We can respect each other. And that's how relationships will grow deep when they are authentic and when they are real. The same applies for home fellowship. Here in ICC Kitengela, we have four goals. And goal number two is authentic community. And, and in authentic community, we are saying it is a place where everyone belongs and, and has a sense of belonging and, and feels part and parcel of the whole and is able to use their giftings and their talents to serve in the body of Christ. We are all about connecting people to God and to each other. And we encourage people to be connected to each other through the home fellowships. Here we call them CGs and even through ministries. Luke 8, 17 to 18, the Bible says, for there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be made known or brought out into the open. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, will be taken from him. Friends, when we have, when we are authentic, when we are real, when we are open, when we learn to be honest with one another, when we learn to open up our hearts to one another, we will have healthy family relationships. We will have healthy home fellowships because we are not pretending. We are opening up to one another. We are real with one another. We are honest with one another. And that pleases the Lord. And when it pleases the Lord, he will make us to grow healthy. He will make us to become what he wants us to become. Friends, we need to be authentic because healthy family relationships, they are authentic. And healthy home fellowships are authentic. We go to M. We have looked at forgiveness, that healthy family relationships are forgiving. They are authentic. M stands for they are magnetic. They are magnetic. What happens when you get to magnets close 
to each other. Of course, they are drawn together. Even when you try to put the, the same poles together near each other, the tendency is, their response is to turn and join together. May I submit to us that when forgiveness is the culture, when authenticity is the norm, then it will be natural for family members, for people belonging to the same home fellowship to embrace each other. Husbands and wives, parents and children, guardians, brothers and sisters will be drawn to embrace one another. Why? Because forgiveness is a culture of those relationships. Authenticity is the norm of those relationships. And no wonder Solomon are uh, writing the book of Ecclesiastes says in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 5 telling us there is a time for everything. He tells us there is a time to embrace. There is a time to embrace. And friends, may we take advantage of that verse, a time to embrace. And may we be a people who are like magnets where we are drawn to one another as family members where God will put in us the desire to draw close to each other where God will put in us the grace to draw closer to one another that even in our home fellowship as the Bible says that will not forsake the meeting together of brethren as some are in the habit of doing but will be the people who desire to draw together desire to meet together because we want our fellowships we want our relationships to be healthy and to be strong as God intended them to be in Jesus' name. We look at I. Remember, we started with forgiveness and then we looked at authentic, that healthy family relationships are forgiving. They are authentic. They are magnetic. And I stands for they impart knowledge or they instruct God has given guardians and parents the responsibility to teach their children. Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 9 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. It is not the responsibility of the schools to teach our children about how to behave or even conduct themselves. With all due respects to the teachers who teach our children and are doing an amazing job even in church. It is not the church's job to teach our children about God. Friends, important lessons, they are taught. They are not taught, rather, they are caught. Someone said that children don't follow what we say, rather, they follow what we do. And so children will look to us. They will, they will model us. They will, we will be the example that our children will follow. They will look up to us on how to behave, on how to live, on how to conduct themselves. And so what better place to be instructed than to be imparted with God's knowledge than the family. If you are going to have healthy family relationships, then we need to be a people who impart knowledge, who instruct one another, who share with one another. Proverbs 6, 20 to 23 says, My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For these commands are a lamp. This teaching is a light and the correction of discipline are the way to life. Proverbs 22 verse 6, train a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Friends, God is calling us that if we are going to have fam healthy family relationships, then we need to be a people who impart knowledge, a people who share the word of God, who speak the word of God together with our families, with our children. And if we, and if we stretch it to our home fellowships, the Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, a Zion sharpens Zion, so one man sharpens another. When we are in a healthy home fellowship, we will sharpen one another. We are not there to step down on one another. We are not there to stumble each other. We are not there to look down on each other. We are not there to criticize each other. We are not there to ostracize each other, but we are there to sharpen one another. Healthy home fellowships 
is where people are sharpening one another. Are you in a home fellowship? Are you in a home fellowship where you are sharpening one another? We move on to the next letter, which is L. That healthy family relationships are loyal. They are loyal. Family relationships should be bound together. Parents should model a relationship that is constant and steadfast and firm before their children. We are living in a day and age when divorce and separation is the order of the day, is increasing by the day. A lot is happening in families and divorce is taking the day. Families are being left distraught. Divorce and separation should not be a child's fear because when we are loyal, as husbands, as wives, when we are loyal to each other, then we show or we model constant, constant, steadfast and firmness before our children, that our children look up to us and they see a constant people. They see people who are steadfast in this family, people who are firm, people who are together, people who are working together. Faithfulness is learned in the home. Paul, writing to Timothy and instructing him on how widows uh, should be treated and who is to be listed as a widow. This is what he says in 1 Timothy 5, 9 to 10. No widow may be put on the list of widows unless she is over 60, has been faithful to her husband and is well known for her good deeds, such as bringing up children, showing hospitality, washing the feet of the saints, helping those in trouble, and devoting herself to all kinds of good deeds. More importantly than extending care to widows, Paul is teaching us as believers, both men and women, that our lives are to be marked by faithfulness. Our lives are to be marked by faithfulness. We are to be loyal as children of God. We are to be loyal to each other in the family. We are to be loyal to each other in the home fellowships because when loyalty marks the family relationship, when loyalty marks the home fellowships, then we have healthy family relationships and healthy home fellowships. And finally, we move on to why. And why we are saying healthy family relationships yield to one another. There is a yielding to each other. If you look at the guidelines Paul gives in the book of Colossians chapter 3 where we read about wives and husbands, how wives are to submit, how husbands are to love their wives, how children are to obey, and how fathers are not to embitter their children. The central key to each of these rules for the family is that no one is trying to be number one. No one is trying to outdo one another. Each one is playing their part. The wife is playing her part. The husband is playing his part. The children are playing their part. And when each and every person is playing their part, then there is health. There is health in that family. There is health in that relationship. Selfishness is replaced with humility because people are putting each other before themselves. And when that happens, when we learn within the family to put others first, then our families will be healthy. Our relationships will be healthy. Even our home fellowships, when we learn to put others first, it is not about outdoing one another. It is not about trying to shine. It is not a try, try, it's not about appearing better than others, but it's about winning together. It is about growing together. It is about learning the word of God together. Friends, we are going to have healthy family relationships when we learn to surrender, when we, when we learn to yield to one another, when we learn to say, go first, I will follow. When we learn to put others first, it is the same Paul who said that we should consider others better than ourselves. Jesus himself Says the Bible says in Mark 9 35, sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. God desires us to be servants of each other. That if our relationships are to be healthy, if we are going to have healthy family relationships, if you are going to have healthy home fellowships, then loyalty must be key. A yielding to one another must be key. 
God designed our relationships. God designed the family. God is the one who designed the home fellowships that we have. He wants us to grow together. He wants us to be together. He wants us to meet together. He wants us to grow together, to share with one another. And only he, because he designed family, because he designed relationships, only he can enable us to relate with each other the way he intended and the way he planned. And so brothers and sisters, as we come to the end of this sermon, I don't know what you have picked today. God desires to see healthy family relationships. That in as much as we are hearing a lot of divorce cases, as much as we are hearing contrary opinions about family, as much as we are hearing negative word about families, what is God telling the church today? And so the next time you hear about family, remember that God is calling us to be a forgiving people. God is calling us to be authentic. God is calling us to be magnetic, to embrace one another. God is calling us to be a people who impart knowledge, who share knowledge, who instruct each other in the way that is right. God is calling us to be loyal and God is calling us to yield to one another. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help me so that our families will be healthy, so that our home fellowships will be healthy. Let us pray together. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for ministering to us and reminding us of those nuggets and qualities that will make our families to be healthy, O oh God, and even our home fellowships, O oh Father, looking by extension, O oh Jehovah, because if our homes, if our families are healthy, even our home fellowships will be healthy, O oh God. And so we pray that you may help us, Father, out of the qualities that we have learned from that acrostic, O oh God, that will be a forgiving people, will be real, will be honest, open with one another, that, Lord, we learn to embrace each other, to instruct one another, Jehovah God, to impart knowledge to one another, to be loyal, and finally to yield to one another, that Lord God will be all about winning together, will be all about growing together, will be all about working together, oh God. And so may you bless our families, may you bless our home fellowships, oh God. I pray that they will be healthy in the mighty name of Jesus, that even those who are not in home fellowship will join home fellowships, oh my Father, that as we apply these things, oh God, they shall be real and our families will be healthy and our home fellowships will be healthy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and we believe. We don't want to end this sermon without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Christ so that you can belong to the family of God. The only way you can belong to the family of God is by giving your life to Jesus. And so if you are there and you want to receive Jesus, repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner. I, I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and be my Savior. I believe that you died for me, and I believe that you rose again to give me eternal life. From this day forward, help me to live a victorious Christian life. Thank you for making me a child of God. Amen. If you have made that, that prayer, get in touch with us, and we would love to get in touch with you as well and walk with you in this journey. God bless you, and God bless you indeed. Thank you so much, Rev. John, for sharing God's word with us today. We are encouraged, and may the Lord bless you and refresh you. And now, church, we've come to that point where we want to invite you to go ahead and worship God through your giving of our tithes and offerings. You can use the channels projected on your screen. That is our MPESA pay bill number 567935, designate tithe offering or a project. Or you can do a bank transfer. Details are on your screen. We also have a PayPal account. And if you're writing a check, write a check to International Christian Center. Shall we pray for the offering? Heavenly Father, this morning we recognize and acknowledge that you're the one who gives us the power to make wealth. And Father, as we worship you through our substances, we ask that God you may receive them. And would you use our offerings for the furtherance of your kingdom? We honor you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you as you give.
you've done so much yes, Lord. when we look back all we can see is your faithfulness father god with, with a grateful heart we thank you and we bless your holy name you can sing along with us you have done so much for me cannot tell it all we sing if i had ten thousand times still won't be enough we sing
which says now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory majesty dominion and authority before all time now and forevermore amen and amen may the Lord keep you and have a wonderful week ahead God bless Tomara tunasema asante bwana Asante 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 bwana